What's up everybody, today I want to show you how to use Streamlabs, a streaming software, in order to create real, authentic live videos via Facebook or YouTube to help engage your students live. So let's get to it. Now the first thing I want to say is with Streamlabs there is a little bit of a learning curve so in order to utilize this you may want to kind of dabble a little bit with Facebook Live and YouTube Live on their own before you go about embarking on something like this because like I said it does take a little bit more time to get used to. If you are very tech savvy then this is a video for you because you can really enhance and engage your students if they can actually see you rather than just hearing your voice. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to, want to click that download button of Streamlabs OBS. This will download the software. It is completely free and it will then open up Streamlabs software and it will give you a blank template and I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay, now I know you're freaking out right now. Your screen is not going to look like mine does. The reason why mine looks like this right now is because not only am I using this screen, it's also recording that screen which creates a mirror effect. However, yours is just going to show one of you, but when you first pull it up, it's just going to be a blank screen because you haven't added in any of the sources yet. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a screen record device and also a video record device. So that way you can have both of these things. So my green screen isn't up right now because I wanted to give you guys the real effect of what it will look like when you first pull this up. So I'm going to press the plus button here. And the first thing that I would do is I would go to display capture. And when I do that, I would press add source. And then it's going to ask me if this is the one that I want it to be. And this uh, is the screen that I do want it to be on. So I would press add source. Now, if you have multiple monitors, you would choose the monitor that you want first. And then you would go from there. I'm going to press cancel because I already have it. Now, the next thing that I'm going to add in is I'm going to add my actual video camera. So in order to do that, I would press the plus button again. And I'm going to go to video capture device. I'm going to press add source. And it's going to ask me if this is the capture device that I want. Again, since I already have this, I'm not going to press add again. But you can drag these things around wherever you want them to be, so that way uh, it fits in your video. So the only other thing that you really need to do with Streamlabs to get it set up is to make sure that the audio is everything is working. So right now you can see on the bottom that my microphone here is currently working. It is recording. Everything is good. Then there's nothing coming through my speakers right now because there's no audio coming through my PC. That's going directly to my headphones so that way I can also hear it, but you don't have to do that. You would want to make sure that you're testing these things out beforehand. What you can do is you can, in the mixer section, you can press the little gear right here and it's going to pull up and it's going to ask you um, if you want to uh, monitor this. So put a monitor on so that way you can actually hear what it sounds like. So for example, in the microphone section, if I turn the monitor on, check, 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 check. you can hear that the mic is working. So I could do that to test out the desktop audio as well and make sure that everything is coming through the way that it's supposed to. Also, if there really was desktop audio coming through, it would be coming through in this section and I would know that it was working. I could adjust the level on it to make sure that it's not too noisy and then I would go from there. Okay. Now before you go live, you need to connect your account. This is what is so cool about Streamlabs because then you don't have to do anything on YouTube or on Facebook. Everything happens through Streamlabs and it will also pull up the live chat while this thing is running, which is really great. So at the very bottom, you're going to want to press log in and you're going to choose which avenue you want to log in as. So I chose to sign in as my YouTube account. It asked me to agree to the terms and conditions and then I pressed agree and now I'm back in it and I can't really tell that I'm signed in but I am. If I go to this button where it says multi-stream, it's going to pull up what I'm currently streaming as and you guys can see that that is my YouTube channel. So I'm currently connected through Streamlabs, which is what is great is I can also schedule a stream down here and it will automatically post that to YouTube. I don't even have to go into YouTube's site and I can also press go live from here and I could create a new event or I have something scheduled for tomorrow. I could say that it's that event 
and then I would press confirm and go live, or I could schedule another live video. Okay, I know I just gave you a lot of information and you're probably about ready to explode, but take it one step at a time. If this is too much for you right now, try doing a YouTube live video just with YouTube. Try doing a Facebook live video just with Facebook. And if you haven't watched those tutorials, I have them linked above. But keep in mind that it is a one step at a time type thing. So if you are really tech savvy, jump in with this. Take a dive and see what happens. And the worst thing that could happen is you make a mistake and you delete that video and you try again tomorrow. It's not a big deal. We're going to be off for a while. So you might as well get the hang of this thing and get your students engaged and excited with what they're doing. Using this software, I can do things like watch videos with my students, do read alouds. I can also use Pear Deck. I can use PDF or Adobe Spark. I can do all sorts of things with my screen while students are also viewing what I am doing. Now it's worth noting that there will be a delay. So if you're using Pear Deck, and students are getting on their devices real-time questions, your screen will be delayed by about five to 10 seconds because it's streaming that live to YouTube or Facebook. So there is that little bit of a delay. So keep that in mind if you're doing something where students are also on their own devices and interacting with that. But it's still such an amazing software and it really gets students hyped up to see their teacher in real time doing such amazing things. Teachers, I need your help. I want to know what the next tutorial is that you want to see. Is there a certain site or an application or a software that you want to see how it works? Let me know. Just toss that down in the comments or email me and I will be happy to get back to you. We will see you guys next time.